reading or you know like a sci-fi novel or a premise to a movie wow yeah, that's it's uh, that's I, scary not yeah. to add to that it's just beware guys beware Hi Tariq, thank you for for your suggestion for the week, which was nasal rinse. Do it the natural way. Yeah, because you know Vanessa is going through her allergies and she's getting addicted to the nasal sprays. Like water yes. and salt might be a better option. Yeah, because we're going into flu. Of this episode. Nice, uh, which is not cute at all. I'm gonna just share my screen. I so feel we can like get... this podcast will get more depressing as as it goes, dude. I know. No, I'm leaving. By the way, I'm going to Malaysia next month, so ah, I'll be I'll be I'll in be good spirits. <laughs> I'll be the depressed guy. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry, but you know what? I'll give you some vibes, like virtually, some sad yeah, vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, everyone. So this week we have uh, yeah, some updates. It's short and sweet because nothing too crazy has dropped. Uh, the first thing is that Google discusses digital PR impact on AI recommendations. So basically, the VP of product for Google Search confirmed that PR activities may be helpful for ranking better in certain contexts and offered an explanation of how AI search works and what content creators should focus on to stay relevant to users. So uh, the caveat is he did not explicitly say like, yo, this is, you know, the PR, like uh, we think digital PR is moving needles for Google. But he was basically interviewed by someone who brought up the question as to if like digital PR has, you know, any impact on uh, on Google's like AI mode, etc. on like your ranking for SEO. And he did say, yes, it did in fact have uh, have some impact. So here are some interesting points that might be useful for the marketers out there. Um, so why this matters is because, you know, it raises the importance of PR work, getting your sites mentioned, uh, sites to mention your business. So this is essentially link building, but link building with proper sources. You know, I feel like PR was something that was very much underloved or undervalued in SEO before and has been sort of put to the side to like PR departments um, and mostly for lifestyle, fashion, etc. But it seems to be important across all industries. And the point he's making is that um, you have to understand if a business should be recommended, the AI, like a human, would search on Google to see what businesses are recommended by other sites. So the host that interviewed this guy then make this, made the connection uh, to how PR um, is invo- uh, important. And yeah, the last point I'll leave you with is that AI visibility overlaps with SEO. And he just basically says that I think there's a lot of overlap and he left it as is. So people are making up their own conclusions to how important PR is, but he's reinforcing that it is important, but not saying explicitly. How do you feel about this, uh, Tariq? You know, I think PR... I'm happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned this because like you said, I feel like PR, it's an underrated awareness channel for sure. Uh, we don't give it that much love and it has lots of, I would say, positive impact. One quick example, like it, it happened just today or yesterday. So with the company I work for, SoundCloud, we do lots of, you know, original research, right? So we have Black Friday, Black Friday upcoming, for example, and uh, we did a study about, you know, uh, some trends to expect during peak season, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, all of that, all of uh, Christmas, all of these holidays. And we said, like, how many carts might be delayed, how many, you know, things might happen, things might go wrong. And the Telegraph picked it up, like, the study Oh wow! yesterday or today, today in the morning. Was it sent to them or was it, like, uh, did someone from your team, your marketing team, reach so out to So usually we have a or... PR person reaching out oh, to, okay. you know, every single, you know, big website, publisher, media outlet. But I think this one might have been picked up organically. Oh, uh wow. So I think this emphasized do more original research. It's that's gonna help you out a lot. It doesn't have to be something crazy. Just send a survey to your customer, ask questions about something in your niche, and just repackage this into a nice, you know, study and then reach out to media, its publishers, and just tell them like, hey, we have the study and see how much it would yeah, it would take to 
get a mention, for example. Yeah, and yours was picked up organically, so no coins were even dropped for this. So it, yeah, I think so. I need to confirm that I think so. But either way, we do have a PR person doing that. Who's actively lifting. working. Yeah. yeah. You know, bring the PR people back to the marketing teams. They deserve a spot. I remember this was pretty huge in the early 2010s um, or mid-2010s, where you would have like a designated PR person um, for I was working in a fintech uh, startup then. Yeah, th this person's main job was to just make sure that you are in the right places, right? And exactly. after that, it kind of left. Yeah, I, I didn't really see as many PR people playing an active role. And, and now it, yeah, I don't necessarily... Yeah, very underrated, very underrated. Exactly. And I think it's because you need to be mentioned everywhere, but also in the right places. And these human contacts are quite important because yeah. what has happened as well is there's a fat fatigue that came from like cold outreach, right? And link trying to do link building yourself. Yeah. And sometimes to the PR person, they've done the in real life networking. Uh, you know, they sort of know these industry people that can help you out. So actually in real life contacts are... I think quite important to to keep get you a little piece of like some online real estate. So yep. I think as yeah uh, as things progress with uh with wanting to rank not rank being cited by AI, yeah, it's I think even we, more important yeah, to do stuff offline. Yeah, I think we switched more our uh, focus to influencer marketing. You know, uh, it's been on the rise for years now, and PR took a back seat. But I think you know, I think with yeah. the upcoming AI age and AI search. Maybe it deserves more love. And I think also because these are credible sources or somewhat credible, you know, uh, journalists or like trusted sites. And I think that trust exactly. factor is also going to become increasingly important. It will definitely improve the authority score of your website, which is like one important factor, go. you know, to rank. Yeah. Awesome. Next article, uh, click-through rates drop by 61% when AI overviews are present and 41% even when AI overviews aren't present. So this was a study done by Sierra Interactive. You can check out the link um, to get more detail. It was a very thorough study with a proper data set. And what they wanted to find out is they've been actually tracking this over the last uh, year or two to see the impact of your click-through rate when AI overviews takes out more real estate on your, you know, on the Google yeah. search result page. And um, so, yeah, Google, I mean, the CTR drops from 61% uh, when you have an AI overview, which always makes sense because it takes up so much space. Yeah. Like so much real estate that, you know, it's it's inevitable that it, it it's going to happen. But why? And there's a lot of these studies that are out there, but I picked this one to highlight because I felt like it, had some good numbers, it was well done. And it was also, they're doing like almost a longitudinal study um, where they're comparing, you know, yeah, from last year. So from June, 2024, they saw that, you know, they were tracking it from then already. And now they're doing an update to show that click-through rates are dropping further. So this yeah. is just an interesting number for marketers out there so that they can correct their metrics. You know, they can correct their reporting and their pro uh, what is this, the word from it? Uh, predictions or when you have to, to do things in advance? Projections. Uh, yeah. Projections. Project, project, prediction. 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 Potato, projection. Potato. potato. Potata. Oh, wait. You said potato? Pota wait, no. Potato, Even that. Potato. You don't potato, know that okay. saying? Yeah, potato, yeah, yeah. I said the same thing as well, but mine was uh, pronounced a bit differently. Okay. But, yeah. What is it? How do you pronounce it then? I said potato, potato. And you said what? Potato, potato. Oh, maybe I just started saying, you know, I'm going to rewatch it and then figure out what I said initially because I sounded a bit different from yours. But anyway, we were saying... You get the idea. You get, get the, the idea. idea. You get the gist of it. But this is an interesting study with a lot of numbers and a lot of details for those of you that are interested to see um, how you can correct your CTR predictions um, and kind of basically explain this to, to the C-suite, to, you know, upper management on how they can have a more realistic expectation for your campaigns. And uh, yeah, I feel like C CTR is not something that you can use for a long time anymore yeah. to kind of predict the, the effectiveness of your campaigns. There should be other measures put in place because it's becoming a lot harder to get people to click. And uh, yeah, so diversify your campaign reach on different, you know, different sources and stuff on different channels. Yeah. Anything and for you to add? I think I found, I came across this cool tactic that, might have a good impact. So basically, oh. 
you have the website Wired, and I saw that they had an article like in September where they're asking us, the readers, to select them as our preferred Google uh, preference. So basically, like there's a pop-up that you can add on your website where you can ask you know, visitors to select your website as a preferred Google uh, preference during search, which means if you're searching for something, the top stories will always come from your website, your blog. Okay. So that's, I think, pretty, pretty interesting, pretty cool. Uh, Impact-wise, not sure how many people will do that, but if you can just see which blog articles are getting you the most traffic, that could be like a nice location to ask, you know, users to, you know, select you as a preferred source. And yeah, I think it could be an interesting tactic moving forward just to, yeah, because like we cannot control what's happening with the AI search result. But if yeah. we can grow our audience organically or if you can just ask them like, hey, if you like our content, just make sure to to show us some love and select us as a as a yeah as a preferred uh, source. So if you want to search for it, just search for a Google preferred source, and you will see how you. And can we can do that, that for you right now. Yeah, and I think yeah, this is this would be very helpful as a strategy for people that are already you know. They have see, the like, loyalty. You, see, the like you can allow users to select new websites to appear more frequently in the main search results. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they know that they're basically going to hide a bunch of stuff anyway. They're going to crowd. <laughs> yeah. The search. The... So I think, and, and I think many people are aware about this. So if mm -hmm. you can get ahead and just test it out, I think can can give you some. And you're kind there. of. You know, uh, making sure that your the people that already know your brand, know your site, are staying loyal to you, and exactly. they're seeing it for any search. This is especially important, I guess, for for news outlets, for blogs. Um, you know, yeah. to kind of. And uh, there's one more point I wanted to highlight actually from this study, and it says that you should also start questioning your traditional paid strategy, because yes, like. Is it worth it then to spend that much money on paid ads when you have AI overview sort of crowding, you know, uh, well, this very expensive real estate? Yeah, I think with the ads, luckily you can get lots of data of like, okay, is it performing well? How many impressions? How many clicks? And if you see a decline or increase in cost, then okay, time to go back on the drawing board and see how what you can need, what needs to be optimized and approved. Exactly. And this is also, I guess, in line, it depends, right? Like it's good for you to do use it as test for testing a lot, like having yep. ads as well, not just for traffic, but for testing. If, you know, it's relevant for certain keywords, whatever, et cetera, yep. like it's a, it's an easy way to, to A-B test. But yeah. uh, the point that was being made by Sierra Interactive, the guys who made this uh, research was that their, their recommendation that is that your CPC might may not have changed, but your efficiency is only going to get worse. So for many, high funnel paid search might not be working. If your main uh, main purpose of doing paid search is for branding, right, or for visibility, like this might not be a good use of your money. And instead, you should be maybe hiring a PR person. Yeah, maybe. PR. Exactly. Yeah, the, if you take anything away from this call, it's like use a nasal rinse and also <laughs> get a PR person. Um, yeah, cool. Next update and last update for the week is the fact that Anthropic thwarted the first AI-driven cyber espionage campaign. And this is in line with some news we also um, shared last week where, you know, with Atlas launching, there were some cyber, I mean, there was some, what was that word called? Like white, uh, I forgot the word. Where, yeah. I think... Prompt injection something. Injection. Like. There's prompt injection and there's the yeah. white, there's something where you could put it in white spaces or so I, you know what? My mind's blanking on me, but screw that. But it's essentially allergies. it's also, also I, I blame it on the allergies and the antihistamines. But <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was Atlas um, agents basically, uh, you know, giving out compromising information and yeah, at risk for prompt injection and something with the white thingy. If I remember it, I'll, say it next week in our next episode but now Claude has uh, come out and said that or Anthropic the company for Claude said that it believes that it has stopped intercepted the first AI driven cyber and espionage campaign and why this is interesting is because they feel that this attack was done by agents without oh. with very minimal human um, human okay. interaction 
That's so the scary. agents kind of went, so I'll read through it because it's quite quite interesting. Um, so the attackers were basically able to manipulate the cloud code to infiltrate dozens of organizations with the model executing 80 to 90% of the attacks autonomously. That's insane. Without a human in the loop, sort of, you know, with like the command, like these guys were rogue, went rogue and did this. Um, so a bit of a timeline, September 2025, the operation, this is when it happened. The operation targeted roughly around 30 tech firms, financial institutions, co manufacturers and government agencies. The threat was assessed with high confidence to be a Chinese state sponsored group using AI agentic abilities to unprecedented to an unprecedented degree. Attackers tricked Claude by splitting malicious tasks into smaller, innocent looking requests, claiming to be a security researcher pushing authorized tests when they were actually trying to seep out like information. Um uh, the the studies, I mean the article that they shared or like the report is quite interesting at text heavy, but why this matters is because anthrop Anthropic calls this the first documented case of a large-scale cyber attack ex executed without substantial human intervention. And AI agents' agentics abilities are creating threats that move and scale faster than ever. While AI capabilities can help prevent them, security for organizations worldwide, worldwide likely need a major overhaul. Wow. So it's not just people we have to be scared of. It's like it seems the like power a premise of the for like a sci-fi movie. Like I you know, right? That That's what I was thinking as well. Like I'm reading, or you know, like a sci-fi novel or a premise to a movie. Wow, yeah, that's it's. That's I have nothing to yeah. add to that. It's just beware, guys. Beware. Be very. When you're also, I guess, using these LLMs, even like you know, or agents, don't give out too much of your own personal information just yeah. yet. You just know, we're yet. just we're, we're in the infancy stage like there's still a lot of uh of yeah of possibilities of it being exploited and these big companies ai companies are just finding out that there's so many possibilities so like there's no proper guardrails in place or like you know yeah security checks so so that, hire that's a it. pr guy who's a cyber security specialist yeah, you're going to need it. I think for the bigger companies, they're going to need it so that they can convince people to not like uh, that their data is safe with them. You know, that's also that's why a PR person is going to be. Look how we made this full circle. I think all the yes. PR people watching this will be like. The PR go. industry owes us, man. They do owe us. We're doing great work. We're doing great work for the PR people. We're doing so great PR time. for PR. Now you're exactly. taking more real estate in the screen, I see. I am. Oh. Oh gosh! Okay, Wait, let okay. me try I'm and like sorry, move I'm you. Sorry, I exist. No, you, you need a. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we're equal. Now we're equal. <laughs> yeah, that's it for this week, guys. We'll see you next week, and hopefully, I won't have the sniffles. And Tariq won't be in winter depression yet. It's Christmas time, so it's at least a bit fun. It's, we'll yeah, check I in in Jan. It's a nice time of the year for sure. When twenty twenty six rolls around, that's when things get hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tariq.